Well, the, the presentation that I will be doing is on deep learning in IBM. Uh, so it's, it's, two, uh, it's, it's kind of, of, of two subjects. I will be talking in deep learning, but what IBM is doing in deep learning. So it's a, it's, it's a broad uh, uh, subject. Uh, because it goes from uh, research, it goes to uh, uh, hardware development, to, uh, to software, to platform, and also to applications, whether they are in the, the healthcare or, or other uh, domains like finance. But I will not, uh, uh, my purpose is not to cover everything. I, I just selected a couple of things that are of interest. Uh, uh, for a, uh, healthcare and artificial intelligence. So the, the, the presentation, in the presentation, I will start talking about IBM in, uh, in research and the, uh, specifically the, uh, our IBM research and development journal. Uh, I will take uh, from the, the edition, there is a new edition in IBM Research and uh, Development Journal that is going to be in September uh, 2017 and is dedicated for deep learning. So it is not yet, this journal is not yet published, but I, I, I succeeded to get the articles and the paper of this, uh, 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 of this journal. Uh, I selected four papers from this journal. Uh, and I will go uh, high level uh, on these papers before I focus on the Power AI, which is a platform uh, for deep learning. It's a, this is where you make deep learning happen. Uh, after that, I go to Bluemix. This is our, the cloud infrastructure where we'll have these artificial intelligence services based on the cloud that could be used and composed to do applications. And finally, I will end by uh, uh, the, the strategy of IBM on Watson Health. Watson is a brand uh, that IBM has created for all what we call augmented intelligence and not artificial intelligence because we, we believe that uh, this intelligence is, is coming to empower uh, uh, people and not to replace uh, people. So what Watson Health is the brand that IBM has created uh, for all what is related to the augmented intelligence. So this is the, uh, uh, the high level uh, uh, of the presentation. I will start by the, uh, as I said, the IBM uh, Journal of Research, uh, Research and Development. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, the website, you can, you, you can find just, if, if, you, uh, uh, if you want, you can find all these uh, publications. Uh, the, the, uh, for example, the last one, which was in June uh, 2017, was about computational neuroscience. I did not get into this uh, this journal. This might be interesting, as as you see, you have other journals that are in uh, security intelligence, in uh, on how to manage uh, 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 IT uh, systems or IT departments. The 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 in. In two or three weeks, you will see a specific issue of this journal specifically dedicated for uh, uh, deep learning. And this uh, 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 journal has 14 papers uh, that are inspiring, uh, very much interesting. Uh, they, they cover a, a broad spectrum of, of artificial intelligence uh, technologies, like, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, like Mark mentioned. Uh, 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 they, they, they cover image processing, medical images, uh, but also they go to natural language processing. They go to, uh, there are articles that are related to, to how to tune uh, the, uh, uh, the artificial neural network. I selected four papers. I will start with the first one, which is related to speech recognition, and especially to the conversational speech recognition, uh, where we are using a combination of convolutional network and recurrent neural network. So both technologies were used in this uh, 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 in, in, this, in, in this research paper. 
So l l let me just put the context. Switchboard is a is a is a corpus of uh, of recorded uh, uh, voices uh, that are 2,000 hours. Uh, from 11,000 telephonic conversation. Conversation is between two persons. It's on the phone, and they are recorded uh, over 4,000 speakers, uh, a pair of speakers, and 100 different topics. So this switchboard it's a, it's a, uh, is, a, is a benchmark for saying how good you can build a system to recognize the speech in this uh, uh, corpus of uh, 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 thousands of hours recorded. So when it was introduced in 1992, uh, almost everybody said that this is impossible because it's a telephony grade uh, signal and it's a conversation. So many people are talking at the same time. So it's very hard to, 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 to teach. So uh, for, for example, the uh, the order of, of, uh, of, of recognition was, uh, uh, the, the order of not recognition, the word, uh, uh, the word error rate, which is the, the, the number of errors, was 80% at the beginning, at 1992. So, 96, the error dropped to 45%. This is the number of errors. Er errors is whether you substitute a word for another word, you, in, you put another word. All type of errors are accounted in this, in, in this uh, uh, ratio. Uh, 2004, IBM achieved 50% error rate. And till 2011, this uh, error rate has stagnated up to this level, 15%, 12%. Up to the coming of the, effectively, as Mark mentioned, the uh, uh, neural networks and the, uh, this new technology of neural networks. All the technologies that have been applied before were the support vector machine, all the machine learning uh, technologies that have been developed. So the, the, l l let, me, uh, uh, l let me go to the inspiring uh, idea behind this is that this was solved because they used two different models one acoustic model and one which is we call the language model. So two model, one acoustic model is for the acoustic sounds. And the second model is the language model, is the English language model. So an understanding of the English language as well as the understanding of the voices. But in each of these models, there were multiple technologies used together. So if I take the acoustic model, they used, you know, the acoustic model is, is something that is sequential, happening in time. So everybody in the artificial intelligence will tell you, you need a recurrent neural network. This is normal because this is sequences of voice. It's, it's a sequence across time. So, yes, definitely, we used the uh, uh, LSTM in a recurrent neural network, but also we used a kind of convolutional neural network to look at the voice as a kind of image. So this is where the innovation is coming. How do you, do you see a voice as an image? Because you see, if you look to the frequencies over time, and you take a, a certain uh, time frame, for example, one second, you will get an image of the frequencies across time. So you can apply the convolutional neural network exactly as you apply convolutional neural network on images. By combining these two uh, methods together, you will get a better, a much better uh, acoustic uh, 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 recognition. So this is from the acoustic side. As from the language modeling side, there are three models that have been used. The first one is the, you know, the word LSTM. LSTM, as was uh, explained, is the long short term, long short term memory, which is the uh, uh, important technology needed 
for recurrent neural network to remember what has ha been happening before. So we use a word LSTM combined with a character LSTM and with a convolutional network on sentences. So here again, we combine a convolutional network on a sequence of things that were supposed to be processed as a recurrent neural network. And by combining these three uh, models, uh, uh, we could have a much better uh, language model. So, th so this is the inspiring idea behind the, the thing. And the rate that we have reached is, this is the object of the article, we reach 5.5 uh, as word error rate, which is exceptional. This is the best rate uh, uh, ever reached. So the, uh, uh, this is where uh, uh, what I wanted to say is that all the elements that have been described before are like small elements that you need to know how to combine to build a much better solution. So this is the first paper. The second paper is about melanoma, the, the skin cancer. How can we uh, identify the uh, a skin cancer from the image, uh, 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 fr fr from a dermoscopy image? So let me, uh, uh, let me put things in context. You know, melanoma is, is very much widespread. If you can detect it, at early stage, then most probably you can give uh, uh, the, the, the good and the appropriate treatment. Uh, it's, it's a difficult disease to be detected because, uh, let, let me just show some examples. These are benign uh, 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 these are benign uh, skin, and these are uh, skins with the melanoma. So it's extremely difficult to say that this is benign or this is really a cancer. The, the approach to solve this problem was also uh, by using a kind of ensemble uh, method. The, 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 the ensemble method is when you bring different technologies of classification or segmentation, you bring them together and you, you, you take the best of all these different methods together. So how this was achieved, let me just show it. First, the, in order to diagnose this melanoma, there are two different problems. The first problem is to do the segmentation. What I mean by segmentation is which area of the skin is really the one of interest. So segmentation is to be able to detect the places on the skins where the melanoma cancer could be present. And the second task is to say, look, yes, I have detected the exact region, but now I have to say, is it a melanoma or is it a something which is benign? So there are two different tasks to do. I'm talking here about the segmentation. So you see a convolutional network, but it's not a, an ordinary convolutional network because we go here from uh, the RGB and H HSV uh, input images and we do three steps of convolution, uh, uh, three phases of convolution. As you see, you have the three convolution layer plus a pool layer, as was explained by Mark. Then you have three convolution plus pool, three convolution plus pool. And then you get here where you do the inverse you try to get to regenerate a certain part of the image. Why are we doing so? Uh, because 
the final result that we want to obtain is a, another image which shows where is the, the, the cancer, where the cancer might be on the skin. So it's a, it's a convolutional network in this direction, and it's a deconvolutional network in that direction. So which is also quite an innovation. It's, it's not exactly like the adversarial network that Park described, but it was definitely inspired by the adversarial network, where you have two adversary networks working one against the other. But this is definitely the idea of generative uh, 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 neural network, where instead of putting the image and recognizing here what it is, I just put here the, 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 the recognized thing, and I will look what image is generated. So it's a, uh, the deconvolutional is a kind of generative model that can generate images from text, from whatever things that you have recognized. Whatever you recognize, if you apply it in the other direction. So the result is the following. This is the original image. This is the ground truth by an expert. If you have an expert, he will tell you, look, these pixels are the pixels uh, related to segmentation. And the, uh, uh, the solution that was developed by the researcher is this one. So the image, the ground rules, and the, the system the, the image generated by the system at this stage. You know, the image that was generated here. This one is exactly uh, uh, this layer. Uh, 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 it is clear. So, so this is an image with the RGB plus the SHV uh, 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 signals, I apply multiple convolutions. I apply multiple convolutions. What is interesting in this is that each time I reduce the number of the convolutional to, to the half, so it was 128, 64, 32. Uh, uh, just here, for example, uh, the filter is a 5 by 5, the filter 5 by 5, 2 by 2, uh, and then 5 by 5. One of the specificity also of this, of this model is that you copy uh, 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 these uh, filters from the convolutional to the deconvolutional one. So what I wanted to show here is that it's about architecting the artificial neural network. How these persons come to imagine uh, such thing, and this is where the research is going, is to build new type of architectures of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, neural networks based on the ingredients that have been presented, like the recurrent neural network, the convolutional network, the fully con connected one, the, uh, also the uh, uh, autoencoders and other uh, things. So, this is for the segmentation part. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is that they achieved, uh, no, let me talk about the achievement afterwards. As for the classification now, whether the, 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 this skin uh, 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 part is a, is a disease or not a disease, well, they combine different classification techniques. These are the classical classification techniques that, have, that are in use. The color histogram, the edge histogram.
you have the image name convolution network that has been inspired and taken from the image net competition. You know, uh, uh, Mark spoke about the image net competition that started in uh, 2012, and there are different competing architectures that were proposed. These are two of these architectures. They were trained on image net, uh, uh, on the image net, and you have the unit shape, uh, which is the uh, the architecture that, that I showed before this one. So they combine this architecture with two other architectures from the academia and with other classical methods, and you put your classification algorithm based on the ensemble method. You look every type of, of classification method and you say, look, now this is the, my, my disease confidence. Is it, a, is it a, 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 a cancer or not a cancer? But based on multiple and a multitude of, of, of things. So the, uh, the, they reach a, uh, a better uh, uh, performance on, uh, uh, on this classification because it's a, it's a very difficult task. This is a very difficult task. And uh, uh, the, the, as I said, uh, they reach a higher level. So the numbers, I do not uh, recall them exactly, so please allow me to see. Yes, this is the result. If you compare uh, the result given by eight different expert dermatologists. You give them an image. You tell them, is this a cancer or not a cancer? Eight different will give you a certain, uh, 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 a certain result. Well, the, the, the accuracy of these dermatologists is 70%, where the system reads 76%. So it's the, the classification was much better, is 6% better than a pool of eight different dermatologists. And the specificity, which is related to the area to segment, well, it, it has also a slightly also higher uh, specificity based on, on what we call the sensitivity, uh, which was 82% sensitivity. Let me explain this, uh, just this concept. For example, here, it's a, it's a white or black. This is the ground truth. When I tell you, this pixel is a, is a cancer part, this one is not. Or this is part of the skin region uh, that is of concern, and this one is not. Well, here, it's a, it's a, it's not 0 or 2, 10, 5, it's on, uh, you know, the shape is a little bit, uh, it's between 0 and 2, uh, 25. So this is where, where, if you fix this to 82%, then we have a better, uh, uh, better diagnosis on the segment that is concerned. Well, another, the third paper that I want to talk about is about uh, a specific segmentation algorithm uh, uh, that, uh, that reach also a better result than the previous paper. So this is to say that, that this area is open for research, whether for segmentation or for classification, and this is the result of the, uh, of the paper. You have the skin image, the ground rules, this is what the experts are saying, and this is what the segmented uh, uh, system did. Uh, what, what the segmentation provided by the artificial neural or, or by the artificial neural network. So this is my, my third article. The fourth article, well, it, it, it addresses the question about hyperparameters uh, for neural network. This is exactly the question that you asked before. Well, in, in this journal, you will see uh, uh, the IBM research, what they have done in this regard. They, they look to the hyperparameter 
as another dimension of optimization problem. So it's a higher level of optimization. For example, if you want to learn how much layers you should put or how much width you should, you should uh, uh, put, that these two parameters are a part of a higher level problem that includes other type of hardware parameters like the uh, 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 learning rate, like the drop out, uh, the drop out uh, rates, how much neuron should I take out in the learning curve as, as, as the plastic state. So, and other parameters like what is the error rate that I should use? Is it a maximum likelihood or is it a other type of error? So, you know, the hyper parameters are the parameters that an architect of an artificial neural network is here to design. So, instead of doing this exercise, as it's, it's very well known, this exercise is extremely difficult because it's a trial and error. You try 150 layers. You try 1,000 layers. In image net competitions in the past, I have seen that the guys of Microsoft, what they did in the, uh, they selected at, at the end maybe 150 layers, but in their research of, of what is the best number of layers, they want up to 1,000 layers in this artificial neural network. So instead of doing all these tests on the hyperparameters, well, there is a method, uh, optimization method. It's it's uh, on top of the of the neural network where it helps to uh, to find what could be the best value, and it has been tested on on different uh, uh, on different exact cases of artificial neural network. And what is interesting is that uh, it's an open source. The algorithm for the hyperparameter is is an open source. So I'm. The, the papers will come, the, all these papers are coming on September uh, issue, so I invite you to look at the research and development uh, journal of IBM uh, for such things. So, other articles, uh, there are other articles that I'm not going to present, but they are extremely interesting when you go to the semantics. What I mean by semantics is the, the meaning of concept. And, uh, and how also you go from the semantic of a word to a semantic of a sentence. This is a, 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 a very hard task today is to, uh, uh, is to, uh, is to, is, is to get the meaning of a sentence, of a complete sentence. There have been a uh, lot of achievements in the the meaning of a word and uh, by the what we call the word embeddings and these word embeddings uh, were able to, to put every word in a uh, in a kind of a uh, 800 uh, uh, vector space dimension 800 dimension vector space where you can do algebraic operations on these vectors on the 800 space. For example, if you say Tokyo, Tokyo will have 800 numbers representing Tokyo, and if you say, for example, Toronto, it's also 800 numbers, but you see that these two 800 and these two vectors are very close when compared to Japan and Canada. So it's, you, you can do subtraction, you can do additions, between words and between these concepts. So these are things that are established now in, in the research, what we call the word embeddings, but what is not yet established is to go from the semantic of a word to the semantic of a sentence. So there are a lot of, of, of things uh, happening there in research, and what is important also is to link this semantics to the semantics of an image. So images have semantics. So also you are now in, a, in, a, in the same space where words and images could have the same space of semantics. You could, from words, generate images, and from images, regenerate words. 
So all this is, is happening now in the research, and, and I am is highly involved in all these uh, things. Now let me move to the uh, second part of my presentation, which is the IBM Power AI platform. This is a hardware that you, uh, it, it's IBM Power uh, with many uh, um, what we call this GPU. Uh, 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 GPU boards in it. Uh, the, the importance of, of artificial neural networks and the difficulty of artificial neural networks is <coughs> you need time. You need time to do your calculations. For example, uh, the LXN that was done in uh, 2012 by Professor Hinton. It took two weeks, two weeks to train uh, uh, the model to get the 50 million or 60 million parameters of the model. The model was almost 50, 60 million parameters. So it took two weeks of processing to, to, to make it happen. So maybe this is why it did not happen in 2010 or before, because we did not have the right hardware or we, we could not wait sufficient time to have the model that is there. So the processing power is extremely important in the advance of artificial neural networks. And all the new technologies in artificial net neural networks, especially reinforcement learning, are very, very greedy in, in computing power. Especially reinforcement learning, because you need to learn your policies, you need to learn your value functions in a small period of time. You cannot wait. It's, it's a decision making. It's something that is, is happening all the time. So uh, this is where I again brought this uh, 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 hardware architecture, but it's not only the hardware. It embedded all the open source softwares that are tuned to work correctly with this piece of hardware. So everybody knows TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the Google uh, open source software that, that can create the, uh, the recurrent neural network, but in a software mode, it's not hardware coded. It's, a, it's, a, uh, uh, it's like the, uh, uh, the, the name, I like very much the name TensorFlow. It's the flow of tensors, the flow of matrices. So TensorFlow is the, uh, the, the real engine and we have a lot of libraries uh, that have been uh, uh, developed, uh, developed on this. All, all this is a Python, like Cafe, uh, and the IBM Cafe, Torch, uh, Chainer. <coughs> all this is on the supporting libraries. I tried myself to, to install the TensorFlow and Python on my machine. I spent one full day and could not do it. So, this uh, is not to say it's, 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 uh, it's I abandoned. So I did download on my machine, on my machine, which is which is a, uh, a Windows PC. I'm not talking about the power. So to say that putting the environment for artificial intelligence is not something elegant. So I ended up installing uh, uh, Python for Windows or something like this, and and then putting TensorFlow on my on my PC. So it's a, it's a very hard task because there are a lot of contradiction between these supporting libraries and it, it's a, you waste a lot of time. So what is interesting about this architecture is that you have the hardware and you have the full stack of software that support this. But not only this, it's, a, it's also something that, uh, uh, that uh, can cut a lot of tasks that researchers are doing in order to do artificial neural network. And I will, I will explain this, this graph uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, but this is, the, uh, uh, this is mainly the process of somebody who is doing research in, uh, uh, and, using, and using the uh, uh, implementing real artificial neural network. So, so it's, a, it's a long process where, where a lot of also uh, intimate knowledge of mathematics is sometimes required. So the importance of power AI and especially power AI vision that I'm going to talk about here is to, to help researchers uh, to do things without having
and intrinsic uh, 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 knowledge. I will come to this uh, uh, later. For example, suppose that you want to, to identify a new type of birds that the image net uh, uh, corpus did not have. So you, you say, you, you take the images, the new images that are not yet in this, uh, and you say, look, this is a uh, pig uh, uh, bird, and this is a pig non uh, type of bird. And you introduce new categories. Or, for example, let me give another example of, of applications. You want to have a security uh, uh, compliance application, so whenever you have an image with a uh, someone on with a uh, with the with the cast on his head, you say, okay, this one is compliant. If it does not have, he is not compliant. So from the image, you try to to learn other things that have been uh, uh, that, that that were not in the image net competition. You try to go to to do other type of applications. So typically, these are seen as well as in videos. You, you want to recognize stars in videos, you want to, to recognize from videos of a drone where is the fire is starting in a, in a place, or if there are any places where there are floodings. So you, you know that imagination in us, we use images and videos for a lot of type of, of, of things, including healthcare. So the, the, the first thing that uh, uh, the small AI vision will help you is to to do a kind of a semi-automatic labeling. So you, you just need to label one or two images, then all the, 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 the images that you have, it will start proposing to you how to label these images. And you correct. So the, the automatic labeling, or the semi-automatic labeling, is, a, 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 is an important st uh, step where manual persons, you, you need, to, you need to, to get your knowledge to the system. And by this simple automatic uh, labeling, you can decrease your time by 10 times or 100 times. It is uh, uh, something important. So the, the workflow of, the, of, the, of your project would be then the following. You start by a simple automatic labeling. Then uh, you start the training. You visualize the training process, and I will show you the tools for training the uh, uh, the training uh, uh, 